Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, something which is uh, seemingly very straightforward, but does trip up a lot of us, myself included. So today we're going to show you how to install, or actually how to remove RAM and reinstall RAM. Yeah, it's a little bit more tricky than you'd think. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at how to actually install RAM in your desktop computer. Now, there's lots of reasons why I've made this video. Uh, one of them is mainly the fact that there is a thing called XMP. So this is an extreme memory profile. There's other names for it on different sides of the camp. So with Intel or AMD, if you're with AMD, technically it's called DOCP. But effectively, they mean the same things. Now, if you take a look at the RAM that you're currently using in your system, you'll notice in your BIOS that there'll be a specific speed rated. Now, your memory modules, such as these ones, these are the Fury from Kingston, the Beast version, they've all got their own individual settings, or at least what they're programmed to do from the factory. So on this particular one, as you can see, I'll give you a close up, you can see these are DDR4, 3200, CL16, and you've got a bunch of numbers after it, which are what is known as timings. Now, when it comes to swapping out RAM, or actually installing RAM, your processor is actually the main key to what your memory can actually do. Now the motherboard does come into it to some extent, so that is uh, part of the equation also, but the memory controller itself is actually built into the processor, and that is for Intel and AMD processors. Although this does change slightly with the newer Intel ones, where you do have a separate controller for DDR5, but anyway, that's another story altogether. So this is mostly for DDR2, 3, and 4, which is still very common. So when it comes to actually installing RAM for the first time, or if you're reinstalling RAM, so in this particular instance, we're going from a set of RAM, which has a fast XMP setting, which is somewhere in the region of about 4,000 megahertz. We're going to actually going down to 3,200. Now, most people would think it would just be a simple case of turn off your PC, take out your RAM, put in the new RAM, turn it back on, and the XMP settings will magically appear and everything will be fine. Now, for a lot of people, that is going to be exactly what happens, but, there are gonna be a bunch of people out there, myself included at times, where it just won't boot. And if you don't have a motherboard, which has the luxury of a diagnostic DLED, you're left knowing, is it faulty RAM? Is there something else? Did I nudge a cable? All those kinds of things. So I'm gonna go through today and show you some tips that I generally try to follow, just in case, and this may help you diagnose your memory problems if you're swapping out RAM, or it's just actually just good practice to do anyway. So let's head over to the computer first of all, and we'll do one of the first steps. So this is the BIOS for our ASUS motherboard that we're currently using on this particular setup. And as you can see on the first page here, we've got our DOCP. You may need to find on your particular motherboard where your memory settings are. It's a relatively straightforward thing if you're not sure. Reach out in the Discord or in the comments below or just dig out your owner's manual for your motherboard. You should find the settings in there. So as you can see, this one has got a profile and there are options for disabled or profile. Sometimes you can select more than one profile. With modern DDR5 systems, there's a whole bunch of profiles, but that's another story. So we've got DDR4 4000, and CAS latency is 1924 at 1.35 volts. 1 volts. So if we shut down this computer, turn it off, take out the RAM, put in other RAM, which is of a lower spec or of a different spec, there's a strong chance that our motherboard is going to still remember this DOCP or XMP profile setting and try to apply that to our new RAM, which it may or may not like. Again, resulting in a non-booting situation. So my advice to you is before you actually go ahead and change it, now obviously if you've got a working system, this is relatively straightforward to do. So you can just go into your BIOS, go into the DOCP and choose disabled. And then you can do save and exit, which uh, we're gonna go ahead and do now and turn off the PC. As you can see there, it says, are you sure you want to turn this off? So it's gonna basically put it back to the auto settings. So we're gonna click okay now. And from that point, we can actually turn off the computer. So for some of you, you may be building the system for the first time. Maybe you've picked up a second-hand motherboard, used motherboard, and you're not entirely sure what the settings are. Don't worry, again, very simple and straightforward to do. All you need to do is just to reset your CMOS. So let's go ahead and do that next. So when it comes to resetting your BIOS, there's various ways you can do it. Most motherboards will have a pin somewhere down the bottom here, which will say clear CMOS or CLR CMOS, something like that. Again, look at your motherboard manual, you'll find out very easily. If you're not entirely sure, or you're just a little bit lazy, or you've got easy access to it, then you do have a CMOS battery, which is just up here, which is normally a CR2032 battery on your motherboard. So just make sure your power supply is turned off. You can do from the back, so just press that, turn the power off altogether. 
I often press the button, just press that in and hold it, and that should discharge any stored power in the system. Then you can go ahead, flip out your BIOS battery. Again, we don't really need to do that in this particular instance because we've cleared the CMOS from the actual BIOS rather than doing this. But again, just flip out the battery up here and then you can put it back in, turn everything back on. But probably best to actually do the RAM first. So if you're taking out RAM, this is, uh, again, relatively straightforward thing to do. The RAM sticks are situated here on most motherboards and you'll have either two or four slots in general. So to remove the RAM, there's normally locating pins and also locking pins, which are at the top of the RAM sticks and possibly on some motherboards at the bottom as well. So let's give you a close up of that so you can see how that's done. So this is a close up of the RAM. So you can see now we've got the little locating pins at the top here or clips. So all you need to do is just push up and you should find that the RAM stick will disengage. If you've got them at the bottom as well, do it as well. And then you can just pull the RAM out of the slot and put it to one side, put it somewhere safe on an anti-static bag, if at all possible. And then just repeat the process again, lift up the little leg and you'll see the RAM pops out a little bit. And then you can just pull it out of the slot and that's gonna leave you with your RAM slots open. So now we can go ahead and install our new RAM. When you're actually installing RAM, you'll notice there is a little indent at the bottom and that lines up actually on the motherboard, which you can see just there. So that goes straight away across. Generally, you'll find that the shorter part, believe it or not, is actually shorter on this side, will be at the bottom. So it'll be something like this when it's in the system. So when you're installing RAM, if you've got slots which don't have the tags on the bottom, but only in the top, I would generally try to install the finger at the bottom first, which uh, if I move that out of the way, you can just about see. So just slotting it into the bottom, into that little channel. So run it into the channel, line it up with the top, and with a bit of firm pressure, top and bottom, just gently pop it into place and give it a good press, make sure it's in. As you've seen there, that top lever actually clicked down into position and you can give it a little wiggle to make sure it's in. But yeah, that is it. And then all you need to do is to repeat it with the next one. When you're installing RAM, if you're doing dual channel, you generally leave the first and the third slots and use the second and the fourth. Again, your motherboard may be different, so follow the instructions for your particular motherboard. So again, just gonna put it in, slide it into that gray slot at the bottom, just to get it lined up. And then both slots, top and bottom, and then some firm pressure, top and bottom, and, and it snaps into place. You can do the bottom first and then the top if you want to. Again, it's entirely up to you. And I'll put those down as well, just to make it look neat and tidy. But there you go, that is the uh, the RAM installed. So now we can go ahead and turn on the computer and now we can set up the XMP profiles for the actual RAM that we've now installed. So now the RAM's installed, we can turn our power back on. And see our motherboard's come to life. Now you can press the power button, make sure, or ideally if you can, you'll probably find your motherboard will actually detect that there's new RAM in there and possibly go into the boss anyway. But have your keyboard ready and be smashing the delete key or whatever key is relevant on your particular motherboard to access the BIOS. It could be F10, F2, F12, F11, whatever, but more times than not, it's gonna be a delete key. So got the delete key at the ready, gonna press the power button, and we're just gonna keep on tapping the delete key. And I don't think this particular motherboard has a diagnostic DLED, so we're just literally gonna keep on tapping the delete key and waiting. You may find that the system powers up and powers down, or the fans ramp up and ramp down, and that is doing what they call memory training. Now it looks like I can see in the background there that the BIOS has come up. So let's head over to the computer now and we'll set up the RAM speeds. So as you can see there, our DRAM status at the top here. So we've got our Kingston RAM and it's currently running at 2400 megahertz, which is the DDR4 kind of default clock speed, 2133 or 2400. Some are slightly more, but that is generally the default. So it's booted up fine. It's detected both sticks. And as you can see in our DOCP, it's currently set as disabled. So we're gonna click on that and now we've got two profile options. So profile one is going to be DDR4 3200, 16, 18, 18, 36, 3.5. And we'll take a look at profile two. I'd imagine it's going to be the same. No, we've got a slightly lower profile. So if you've got a processor or a motherboard which doesn't like DDR4 3200, you can always down clock it to the 3000 speed and also get slightly lower CAS latencies, which is something we can talk about in a future video. 
So we're going to set it to that DC, DOCP or XMP DDR4 3200. We're happy with that. So now we can do save and exit. And you can see now it's saved the settings there. So we'll click on OK. And at this point now, this is where you cross your fingers and hope that everything's going to work absolutely fine. It should now, again, try to retrain the RAM, maintain those settings, make sure they're all OK, and boot into the system. Now, again, if you're having a motherboard or a processor, which actually doesn't support that kind of frequency, you may find that the system just won't boot at all, in which case you need to clear a CMOS, go through again, and choose a different XMP profile. But it does appear, from what I can see in the screen behind me, that we've gone into the system and it's booted up first time, which is absolutely awesome, and is exactly what we'd expect to happen. But, unfortunately for some people, it doesn't first time. So anyway, hopefully this video's been helpful to you. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then hit that subscribe button and the chime notification, and be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This has been Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.